Welcome back to Exposed. Every show we try to feature someone who we believe is a youth role model on the show. And this month we actually have three of them. So the first two um, I interviewed this summer and they are some really young and talented athletes. I'm outside of Onage by the, the lovely water <laughs> and I'm with two young women who are very talented athletes Guo and Ahawi Daibo, did I say it right? I probably butchered it and uh, So tell me a little bit about yourself Do you want to start? Uh, like you said, my name is Guo and Ahawi Daibo I'm 17 years old I uh, go to survival school uh, I paddle, it's pretty much all I do, <laughs> besides, you know, And how long friends, have you been paddling for? I've uh, been paddling for 10 years, this was my, my 10th year. And Maris, your turn. <laughs> so I'm Maris Jacobs, I'm 16 years old and I go to Sacred Heart, and I've been paddling for Anagia for about 9 years. So what got the two of you um, interested in paddling? When I was small, uh, I liked to follow my brother around and do everything that he did. He joined basketball, I wanted to join basketball, and he joined paddling, and I wanted to join paddling, and I just stuck with it. I wasn't really much of like a sporty kid. You wouldn't really call me an active child, but my mom was like always signing me up for things that I really didn't want to do. So I did like skating and like <laughs> t-ball, and I hated it. <laughs> and then one day she just told me that I was, she signed me up for paddling, and. I really had no choice but to come here and then I went for one year and then I didn't really think about if I wanted to go back or not, I just kind of kept coming back and it just kind of stuck. And you, the two of you have been like paddling together as like partners for like how long? Uh, maybe it's seven or eight years. When I first started, uh, I had a, a different partner, a, a girl that paddled for like two years or something and then she quit and then she only started like we only start racing like our second year of paddling because uh, like we're good in our boats and stuff, and then that's when me and her started. And uh, how's, how, how's the relationship? <laughs> well, she's my first cousin, so you can only imagine. <laughs> it's like you put two people in a boat, and like obviously they're gonna be like different, diff two different people. You know, I feel different in my boat; she feels different in her boat. We have our like problems, but she's we so can't cool. really dwell on it too much because it's gonna mess up what we do like when we're racing so we kind of have to like get past it but at the end of the day it's, it's like we kind of have to work it out no matter what happens because we're two people in one boat. <laughs> uh, so the two of you like you've been in the news a lot about like you know winning and stuff like that so what what, what have been some of your your favorite like, accomplishments? Um, well there's been a, f a few I guess when we were younger maybe but um, one of the ones that I think was surprising to me was when we were both still Bantams and we we made it we qualified for nationals which it which is like uh, Canadian Canadian nationals is for midget and older so we were both Bantams still wearing life jackets and I didn't even know what it was I didn't even know you could qualify for that at our age so we got there and everybody was like why are they still wearing life jackets you know so it was kind of cool to get there like at such a young age and compete against paddlers that are like two, th three years older than us. So it was cool to get there at a young age. A couple of years ago uh, was when we, I think it was my first year midget. I was seven, 16, yeah, no, 15. Yeah, I was 15 and we qualified for nationals for every single one of our races that we were in at provincials for my K1 races, uh, her, her K1 and our K2, like all the races that we did, we qualified for everything. And I think that was, I think that was the best year. I mean, it's a little bit harder for competition at nationals. We didn't do as good as we did at provincials. And those are all like the best paddlers in Canada, but it was pretty good just to make it there for all our races. And how has this season been going for the two of you? Um, this season, it was kind of like we had to, like last year we had no coach. Like uh, he, he iron works and he had to go back away to work for a year. And so we kind of 
like we didn't really improve because we had like we had oh for pra we went out for practices but we didn't really have anyone helping us with like technique and stuff it was more just like a stop and go like telling us when to go and whatever but this year he came he was back and it was kind of like it was it's, it's hard to get back up because the competition gets really hard at this age like after like 14 or 15 years old like anybody who paddles it's like mostly dedication we did we did good this year but it was it was hard because we, we had like a year, pretty much like a year off kind of thing. I guess it was, I found this year kind of like short too because, well, she's first year juvenile and it's like, especially when you're past that midget age, like you don't have all the races that we go to with like the younger kids, there's like not much to, to race. Like compared to when we were younger, we had like over, maybe over five, four or five races because we would race above our category, but there's only, when you get to a certain age, there's not much you can do to race, so um, I found it kind of short even for myself, second year midget, and it was, it definitely does get more difficult when you, as you age, because when you're like a teenager and you're studying you're in a sport like this, you have, like, like she said, it's like mostly dedication, you have to put almost all of your time into it if you want to do better, and a lot of the girls and, or a lot of the people that are our age paddling now, they're kind of, it's like, almost like they're aside from school, like their job to train and their job to do well so they can improve and um, make like national teams and stuff and maybe like a long-term goal to get to the Olympics. So it's kind of like a job that you're doing. So how, how have you been practicing in this, this disgusting water? Uh, there's well, been no practicing in here. Yeah, <laughs> we, we paddle in the seaway like because we, we can't paddle in here. Like it's, it's hard enough even just getting from the dock to the bridge there's that much weeds you get stuck. like it just it all gets stuck to your bow and the rudder in the back and it just like drags so like a lot of weight it's like a big weight put on the boat <laughs> yeah so it's just kind of I guess it's probably pretty obvious that you can't really looks kind of looks, looks like you can like walk across it right now because there's like so much weeds so and it's tough because when we take kids out like especially like because they're just starting our first or second year and they don't really have that much experience in boats they tip easily, and if you bring them in the seaway, there's boats and ships that pass, and it's like it's hard to get them to stay up when there's waves everywhere. And it was good last year, like we could paddle up to like the 500 meter mark, but it just the water went down a lot, so we can't really do that with them anymore. It doesn't even move. <laughs> it doesn't. It just it's, yeah. The it's only literally time, this deep. The only time that. it moves is when a ship passes and it sucks all the water in, <laughs> and then comes back and that's it. Then you're basically <laughs> sitting in your boat like on land in mud. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Give it a couple of more years like this and that's what will happen. <laughs> it's it's like two feet deep. So I guess uh, just a final question that I wanted to ask you two girls. Um, what are your future goals? I mean, do you see the Olympics in your future like to strive for? Yeah, I would, I would definitely like to make it there. Um, like that's what my goal is right now is to make it there and then after that I want to continue training and also training other kids to become like a coach and coach other kids to maybe help them get as far as I did or you know. I don't really, I, every time somebody asks me like a question about like are you gonna go to the Olympics like I get that a lot especially from school and like grandparents and stuff and I never really know what to say because it's like like I said I've always been <laughs> bad at making decisions for myself because it's like so far into the future that I don't really know what I want to do right now. I'm going to my last year of high school, I don't really know what I want to do for college. So it's like, it's kind of, I'm just taking it season by season. I'm trying to get better at and prove every year at what I'm doing before I make my decision. But I think, especially with this past, the, what, the Olympics just ended and I was watching it on television and I, I always wanted to be like one of those kids that you're watching TV when you're little and you're like, oh, mom, I want to do that. And I never was because I wasn't really that into sports. So I was like, uh, you know. But now that I'm getting older and I know what it's like and I'm getting better at it, I, I'm kind of considering, you know, going for it because we have everything we need. You know, we're, we've been doing it for nine, 10 years and I think we have, we have a good chance at going further and I think it's a good idea for if I would go for it. Alrighty, so good luck to both of you in your future endeavors and uh, I'm excited to see you on the water. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. 
uh, they'll be more exposed after this quick commercial break.